you've been to my website, uh, you've probably seen that I've done some experimenting with sanding wave interferometers and sanding wave sensors. These are uh, fairly difficult sensors to come by, but the one that uh, I had originally I had to uh, get from a special place in Germany. Uh, so I've always wanted to build my own or design my own standing wave sensors to find a simple way to do it. And uh, what I just want to talk about today is uh, some sensors that I uh, constructed using a fairly simple technique called chemical bath deposition. Uh, these sensors uh, that I've been working on are based on thin film cadmium sulfide. Now, <clears throat> the idea with a standing wave sensor is that you're going to uh, have your beams coming from two different directions. One's coming this way, and the other one's coming this way, and they're going to actually interfere uh, as they pass through the sensor from opposite sides, which is different than you would have with the usual sensor, where you would have the two beams usually coming from the same direction and interfering. So what it requires is, uh, firstly, that the sensor has to be transparent, and secondly, that the uh, photodetecting film has to be very, very thin, so that when the standing wave forms across the film, the uh, film thickness is, is thinner than the wavelength that you're trying to measure. <clears throat> so that's usually on the order of uh, maybe 50 to 100 uh, nanometers, something like that. <clears throat> So uh, what I've got shown here are some sensors that I worked on. Uh, it took a bit of practice to be able to cast cadmium sulfide into very thin films uh, down to around that range that we wanted to reach. Uh, but because cadmium sulfide is uh, like a simple photoresistor, once you've got the film cast, you just need to put contacts onto the film, and then you can measure uh, just by the re resistivity, conductivity, of uh, of the film as the beams passing through to try and detect your interference signal, and uh, one of the strategies that I used was um, once once we had gotten the films to the correct uh, thinness that we wanted, was to actually mount the sensors right onto uh, a mirror, uh, which I've got shown right here, and uh, we mounted contacts, and the uh, the mounting was done with candle balsam so that the uh, light could pass through the sensor and um, one of the beams could reflect from the mirror and go back through the other side. So you actually get the interference between the forward beam and the reflected beam from the mirror. So that forms your, uh, your interfering signal. Another thing I wanted to show was uh, some of the electromechanical actuators that we used. You can see here that this one actually has a uh, little piezoelectric uh, actuator attached. Uh, another one shown right here. These are just small size ones that move small distances. We also have a amplified actuator. <clears throat> this one can actuate up to 400, uh, 400, uh, 400 micrometers, so this would be uh, 0.4 of a millimeter. So this uh, uh, can move quite a bit further than some of these smaller ones. And we're going to show now um, some footage of us <coughs> doing an experiment using this amplified actuator. Now as it turns out, the cadmium sulfide sensor has a uh, maximum um, photosensitivity around the 500 to 550 range, at least in our application. So uh, we decided to go with a 532 nanometer laser because this kind of suited the photosensitivity uh, spectrum that we were dealing with. Uh, so I've just got the laser shown here. Um, the sensor with the mirror as I described uh, is shown over here and we have our amplified piezo actuator which moves the mirror back and forth towards the cadmium sulfide sensor. So what's going to happen is uh, the beam that comes this way is going to reflect and it's going to form a standing wave across the sensor and then we're going to push uh, one of the uh, sides of the beam past the other one and this will uh, move a number of wavelengths along. In this case, because we're moving so far with the piezo actuator, we're going to get about uh, 400 uh, waves uh, that we're going to be seeing across the oscilloscope as it moves back and forth. So this is being driven by a triangle wave generator. And in order to make the uh, signal seen easily, because we're dealing with a photoconductive sensor here, uh, we have to apply a voltage to the sensor and in this case, uh, we found that uh, we get good amplification of the signal if we use a high voltage. So we used uh, 100 volts 
worth of 9 volt batteries to generate our high voltage which goes through a drop down resistor and then uh, passes through our cadmium sulfide sensor and the opposite lead then goes to ground and the AC signal generated by moving one beam past the other is then sent to the oscilloscope where we see it as a uh, wave moving uh, up and down and you'll, you'll see that in a moment. Right, so what I'm just showing here now is the uh, P601.4 actuator is now pushing the stage and generating um, uh, basically a series of uh, cycles per, per stroke which corresponds to the wavelengths that is passing through on the standing wave detector. We've got this going uh, fairly well now and quite stable. Uh, you can see on the bottom is the uh, voltage changing and we're at 10 volts per division and uh, the pulses uh, were on uh, 10 milliseconds per division. So I think we're actuating between about uh, 40, 40 volts per stroke and uh, you know we're getting maybe about um, 2, 2 or 2.5 uh, milliseconds per cycle so maybe around 400 uh, Hertz per stroke something like that and this is the setup here I'll just zoom back out we've got the actuator the P601.4 actuator is connected to the silver stand on the right uh, which is pushing with a little pusher control there the uh, the stage which has a mirror and a uh, uh, cad cadmium sulfide uh, or, yeah, cadmium sulfide standing wave sensor which is on the left of the stage and this is being driven by a 532 nanometer green laser so there we have it